Welcome to this QuickBooks 2021 tutorial for beginners on how to record sales. My name is Matt Holquist with the QuickBooks University. Now, a big mistake that I see a lot of new QuickBooks users make is recording sales in QuickBooks. Uh, there's a couple of different ways you can do it, but there are two primary ways that I'm going to go through in this video today. And so once you start doing this, it really depends on if you are, you know, billing your customers, sending them a bill, or if people are paying you at the time of sale. All right. So first of all, what I want you to do is check out the top mistakes over at the QuickBooks University. That website is qbuniversity.org. With the videos there you can sign up for, you can learn these top mistakes and how to avoid them. All right, so let's get started. So you're starting out in QuickBooks and you're like, oh my gosh, this is overwhelming. What do I do? Uh, well, one big area that you're going to have to learn how to do is how to record your sales uh, because the sales, the revenue in the business, that's what drives it. That's how you get the money in. That's how you're going to pay your bills, how you're going to pay yourself and, and how you're going to determine if you're pricing things right or wrong, etc. Okay, so when you get into QuickBooks, there's two primary uh, things you need to think about when you're thinking about sales. The first one is, are you extending credit to people? Are you sending them a bill? Do they buy something? Do they, you know, do they buy a service? Do they buy a product and then you send them a bill? Or is it at the time of sale? Do they pay you right at the time of sale? All right, so th that's really the first determination you need to make. So depending on the answer to that is how you're going to record this in QuickBooks. So let's say, let's take this example that you send customers an invoice. Okay, so they come in, they pay for a service, they pay for a product, you could have a lawn maintenance business, you could, you know, have any type of business where you're providing some type of service in general, where you're going to send them an invoice and then get payment in return. So to record that, the first thing you're going to do, you can look on this customer's uh, flow chart here, and you're going to see the button create invoices. All right, so you can also do you can also go down up to customers drop down menu and go to create invoices right there. All right, so we're going to click here, create invoices. Very straightforward to do. This is basically like a paper invoice. All right, so you're going to fill in the fields. You're going to say, okay, this is going to, you know, let's pick somebody down here. Uh, Eloise, Eloise Milner, room edition. All right, we're not getting into class right now. We have this new invoice template. You can see today's date. The invoice number will automatically enter and it goes in a chronological order. Uh, you can enter your own unique invoice number and then the next time you create an invoice, it's going to do the next number after that. And then it's going to put in the customer's information. Now, if you don't have this customer in QuickBooks, you have the option to add new. So in this drop down menu, if you go all the way to the top, you can see add new so you can add a new customer there. We're going to leave it on Eloise Milner. And then if you have a PO number, great, you can enter that. And then the terms, is this net 30? Do you expect them to pay in 30 days? Is it net 10, 15, due on receipt? You can specify right here and you can add new if you need to. So now over here, you're going to pick the item that you are billing for. All right, and this is a different area in QuickBooks. Quick, QuickBooks is made up of all these different databases where you're going to add information. So in this item database, this is called an item list, which is found up under the list drop-down menu. You've got all the different items that you bill for, all right? So again, if you're just starting out in QuickBooks and there's nothing in this list, you're gonna click add new and say, hey, we bill for this, so here's how we're gonna set this up. I have that, I do outline that in other videos on the channel. All right, so the new thing we're going to bill for here is let's say that we are doing some floor plans and we're gonna say quantity one uh, and we bill $2,500 for this. So you can type in right on the face of this invoice. It is a non-taxable transaction, so the total is $2,500. It's $2,500. You can see down here the total, the balance due is $2,500. Now, we're not getting into sales tax in this uh, video, but some states have sales tax on services. So you just have to be aware of that, that it is charging or is not charging sales tax. You can put a customer message down here and you can say, hey, thanks so much for your business. Look forward to serving you again. You know, whatever you want to put down there is fine. Now up here, I want you to notice here, if you're going to print this invoice. You can print it right now, 
But if you're doing multiple invoices, generally you want to check print later on all of those invoices and you can go back and print them all at one time. If you are emailing them, which I suggest so that it gets to them quicker, you say email later if you're doing a bunch of invoices at once and you want to email them all at the same time. Now, if this is a single invoice and you're emailing just now, you click this drop down and you can go ahead and email this invoice immediately. All right, and then once you're done, if you're doing another one, you say save and new. Uh, if not, you're saying save and close. So we're going to close this. Now, it brings up this alert in this sample file for class tracking. We're not going to get into that right now, so we're going to say save anyway. All right, so there you go. So if you're sending an invoice to customers and expecting a payment, you're going to do an invoice. Now, what do you do if the customer pays right when they are at your place of business? When you do that, what you want to do is you want to go up to the customer drop down menu. All right, and we're going to see if we go down here, let's see, a sales order, invoices, sales receipts, enter sales receipts. Okay, so a sales receipt, this, this format looks just like an invoice, and it really is. The only difference is you're getting payment right now instead of collecting it down the road. All right, so again, we're going to fill this out. We're going to go down to, let's say, Jeanette Mameo Utility Shed. Custom sales receipt, date, sale number. Let's say that she came in and paid by check, 6321. We'll put in the check number. And we're going to check this, uh, click this check box right here. We're going to choose the item. So let's say she came in and she play, paid for some blueprints. And let's see, one set of blueprints that were $55. You know, we're just making a copy. We already have the blueprints. And so she's going to pay right now. And so once we say print or save, it's done. You collected the money, you got the check. All right, so we're going to say save and close, save anyway, and we have that money. So those are the two primary ways. Somebody, you're going to have let them pay later. They're going to send you the money. That's when you do an invoice or they pay immediately. And that's when you're going to do the, uh, the sales receipt. Any questions, any comments, please feel free to leave those below. Happy to answer those. Keep those brief. Sometimes they get very long and are difficult to answer uh, through a comment. Also, again, head over to the QuickBooks University at qbuniversity.org, where you will discover a whole lot more. Thanks so much.